Okay, so um, I'm going to talk about UDTs, and um, those are user-defined types, and if you care about your performance, you should check them out. So um, let's start with regular columns, and you can do anything you want with them. You can specify a write time, you can set a TTL, you can delete, update, insert each one of them independently. But do you really need that? And does it cost you anything? So what are user-defined types? So there, you can think of them as structs. And we use structs when we develop code, but you can do it also uh, in your schema. And Scylla supports frozen UDTs. What it means um, is that uh, Scylla will treat a frozen UDT saved in a column as a single cell. So all those fields will have the same TTL and the same write time. And right now you can only update all of them together. There is a feature uh, that will implement that will allow you to update a subset. However, you can select a subset of a UDT. So when you query information, it's the same thing as regular columns. So how much better are UDTs when you talk about performance? And um, what I'm going to show is a simple example where we took uh, an example of using 10 columns uh, versus a UDT with 10 fields and so forth. And um, in all cases, we're going to write all of them and read all of them. So the graph shows that when we're talking about 10 columns and 10 UDT fields, again, we're writing everything, well, it's very similar. But when we're talking about using 50 columns, well, you can get more than two and a half times performance in throughput. Well, that's nice, okay? Now, let's talk about reading information, so that's right. So, when we're talking about read, again, 10 columns, 10 UDT fields, well, it's almost the same as well. The reads, well, 75% better. Same hardware, same everything, better throughput. When we're talking about latencies, is there any benefit of using UDTs? So um, in the write pass, you're not as concerned about it. But in the read pass, well, if you're using large columns or a lot of columns, then you can get better latencies. And that is because the processing inside Scylla is much easier. We don't need to compare so many write times, so many TTLs to know if we can need to return user data. So if you have a lot of columns, use UDTs. Um, two more comments. Well, um, wh was I lying? And if I select only a subset, would it be better to use columns? I don't read all the columns. The answer is no. And the thing is that Scylla's row cache will fetch a complete row. So even though in your query you selected only three columns out of the 50, Scylla will need to fetch all those 50 uh, 50 columns, insert that into the row cache, and then return you in the query result the three that you requested. So there's no performance benefit um, in the query path. And however, there is an additional overhead on the client side. So um, I did my test with a Go driver. It seems to work very well. I'm not a Go developer. Um, on the other hand, um, I know that uh, when you're using the Java driver, there is an overhead when you compare it to regular reads and writes. Thank you.